Welcome to our deep dive into data flow management with BizData's Ease Integrations Console feature. In this video, we'll explore how console visibility empowers us to understand and optimize our data operations. We'll show you how monitoring the data flow allows us to track data movement, diagnose issues, analyze the impact of specific operations, and ensure data integrity. Join us as we uncover the critical role of console visibility in enhancing the efficiency and reliability of data processing pipelines. In the first step, we will configure the data source. Using API as a data source here. Selecting Humanoid API from the catalog and list users as the business object. Next, checking the response from the API by testing it. Next, we'll dive into the data operations step and explore the powerful console feature in detail. This is the console where you can track data flow management. As of now, there are no logs displayed here. The first operation used will be single line to multi line since the data received in source was in single line. But before entering the key values, we'll perform a milestone check to verify the data received from the source. This is done by clicking the valve. Next, we'll go to the console to view the data. Here, we can see the API response from the source. Here we can notice that, the response from the source is organized within the key named data, while, the entire response is encapsulated under the key, BizData Dataset Response. Thus, these two keys will be passed in this operation. The double arrow mark allows us to directly copy the description into the input box. Here, we are using this feature to quickly copy the key names. Now, we'll perform the milestone check by clicking the valve. Then, we'll check the console to observe the conversion of data using the operation. Here, we can see that all the single line data has been successfully converted to multi line format. The response was generated quickly and easily in the console by simply clicking the valve. Now, we notice that some additional responses have been generated from the source. Our next step will be to eliminate these extraneous responses to enhance our data. We'll use the eliminate operation to remove the additional data by passing the key names of the data that are not required. Next, by clicking the valve again, we can observe the updated data flow with the removal of the additional data. Here we can see that all the specified keys have been successfully removed, and the console efficiently captures and displays the updated data flow. Next, we will use append operation to enhance the data. We can directly copy from the description and add meta tags such as Y and P as can be seen in the video. We can further enhance the data by adding additional tags such as the data source example, Oracle. They can be reflected across all records, providing consistent and comprehensive metadata as can be seen across all the records in the video. In the data, the first name and last name are stored in different keys. Our requirement is to concatenate them into a single field. We will add the key name. Then, under the sprint f function, we'll pass the keys that need to be concatenated, ensuring that each key is merged into the respective field. We can see that the full name got concatenated for each record. We can also put a hyphen to separate the merged keys. Now, our requirement is to have the full name with space, so we will put a space and get the desired results from the concatenation as can be seen in the video. Next, we'll employ the base64 encoding operation to conceal the email addresses of the listed users by encoding them. 
Next, following the same process of clicking the valve to verify if the encoding has been successfully implemented and if the email addresses are concealed, it can be seen that they are encoded. Next, we'll proceed to decode the same data using Base64 decoding. This step will allow us to verify the efficiency of the console in accurately displaying the data flow, decoding the data and restoring the original email addresses. The decoded data is promptly displayed as can be seen in the video. Next, we need to add the current day's date to the list. We'll achieve this by using the today timestamp operation to insert today's date. Enter the required format of date, under date format parameter, and give the date time key, to store the timestamp. We can see the current date getting added to the records. Next, we want to perform date analytics. Date analytics allows us to extract valuable information from dates, for both calendar and financial year, and many other related details. Thus using date analytics operation. Enter the date field key in the designated space. Next, enter the fiscal month start number. Date column will give the auto-generated fields of date analytics and it can be modified by the users. Finally, enter the start of the week and check the console for the response. It can be seen that date analytics fields have been generated from the date in the data. Date analytics has been done for both calendar and fiscal year as can be seen in the video. In summary, the console offers users clear visibility into the data flow, enabling users to understand how data is incoming and modified at each step. Any errors occurring between steps are promptly reflected, ensuring timely correction. Moreover, data modifications are immediately visible in the console, facilitating real-time monitoring. The console arranges data in an easily understandable manner delineating accurately defined steps within each operation name. This comprehensive suite of features empowers users to manage their data effectively and make informed decisions throughout the data processing journey. Next step is configuring data target. Entering data lake details where data is to be ingested. In the final step, we name and describe the integration bridge, set the interval, and save the configuration for data integration.